Hey, I'm Derek. Thanks for checking out my video about Redshift Materials. I got a lot of requests of how to do the Batmobile textures that I did in my tracking video. So today I'm going to actually show you all of the textures I use for that Batmobile and a floor texture with this scene. And the coolest part about this tutorial is that I didn't use a single texture map. There are no images, there are no resources I use. This is all 100% procedural inside of Redshift. Let's check it out. Thanks for all the requests. I hope you like it. So I'm gonna walk you through how I created all these materials from the matte black kind of paint job to these tires, to this floor, this dark tinted glass, this gunmetal kind of gun that's made of metal, uh, these lights, how to do these little lens flare things. They're pretty cool. So first we're gonna start off with this sort of dark matte black finish okay so I didn't name it to name your material you can either go over here and type it in there or you can type it in here once you double click it these are the same windows so we call this matte black okay see change there you can go before I go to edit shader graph what a lot of people do is they'll go into redshift here they'll go to redshift render view and they'll hit this little play button and what that will do is it'll use their render settings to render out the image progressively. And if you turn this little bucket on, it'll bucket render, which will show you what the final render will actually look like, uh, except for motion blur. It doesn't show you that. So this is a little slow, though. If I'm going to be tweaking my texture, I don't want to wait for this to sort of finish every single time. Okay, so let's take that off. So what I like to do is actually, actually right click this open window and normally it starts off really small but I've had it open so it'll be like that but you can just open that up bigger and this is going to give you uh, an object here that you can change a uh, cube sphere rounded cube or jam candle you can have a custom object if you want we're going to stick with this sphere for now and what this is going to do is just going to render a little a lot faster than your scene progressive render and so you're going to see the changes you make to your material right away if you need to if you get like lost and you spiral around you're like oh my gosh where where the heck have I gone okay because you can alt middle click and drag around and then all of a sudden you're you're zoomed in by scrolling or scrolling in or out you don't know where to go uh, hit H and that will frame everything up to this window first things first before we do that we're gonna go to create redshift material so you've got this redshift material down here. We're going to call this matte black 2. Okay, so this. So if you right-click this one, you can't open that window. I don't know why, but you can right-click this one and go to open window. And so then you can close that off. We've got that there. We've got this here. So first thing we're going to want to do, we've got this redshift material and we've got this output. We don't need to touch this. This is fine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to custom and we're going to go to plastic. Uh, we don't have to do that, but I like to start off with plastic a lot of times. So color, we're going to go with black. And then we're going to go down here to the reflection and we're going to say 0.5. Okay, you see instantly we've already got this simple sort of matte black, but it's too, it's too simple. Okay, so we're going to turn this IOR down to like 1.46, which is just going to barely make any change at all. You didn't really have to do that. It just kind of affects how the light's going to bend off of it and stuff. So what I like to do to give my texture just a little texture ha, is add a noise. And you can either create a noise in somewhere else or in Illustrator or Photoshop or After Effects but I'm going to use the noise creator inside of Redshift. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this little circle, the out color, and I'm going to take this to the blue square, and from that, I'm going to choose Diffuse Color. So now you're like, well, wait, that's not black anymore. Because what we made black, we've now replaced with this noise. This, this is what we really need. So we've got Fractal. That's fine. We're going to turn that up to 5. We're going to leave these at 2 and this at 2. So you see 
it's just got a little difference. So like you can sort of see it here, but it's just nice to have this this big and it's quick. You don't have to wait for the whole thing to render. Now, one thing I'm definitely going to do is change this scale up just a little bit, which is actually going to make everything smaller. I know it's it's crazy. So the bigger the number here, the tighter the noise is going to be. So imagine this is like resolution kind of. So if I go real low, it's going to be real big noise and you're barely going to see it. But if I go up, it's going to be real tight noise. So 0.3 is pretty good. 0.1 is the default. I like that. That kind of looks like, um, well, I'll show you what we're going for here. We've got the first color is black. The second color we're actually going to make really close to black. Really close. Okay, so just too close. Just a little too close. There we go. So we're starting to see just the teeniest, maybe 24%. Yeah, so you can just sort of see the difference here between the pure black, right? You, you couldn't really see it. But once you take it away, you kind of realize it is just adding that little bit of texture to it. It's as if the when you're they're painting it or something, the paint kind of landed a little thicker in some places than others. So one thing you can do with noise, if you need to help, is plug it bypass this material and plug it straight into the output. So now you're not going to see any reflection or anything. You're just going to see exactly what you're dealing with here. So if you wanted to like get your colors right, it's literally I could have done this to get my gray is close to black like the color I wanted it to be so I want just a little bit what did I say 24 25 that might be a little too light let's go about 22 okay so now to break things you just grab the cord and rip it away so output color to surface it'll light up this very bright red just to let you know that something is wrong okay so now we've got this that looks pretty good, but what I'm actually going to do is take it one step further. I'm going to go and add a bump map to this. So I'm going to just type in bump, and I've got bump map. Click. Okay, and I'm actually going to use this exact same noise, plug it into this texture input. Okay, and then we're going to take this bump map and plug it straight into overall bump input. So if you try to take this and put it straight into the bump input, it's not going to work. Redshift has to go through a bump map and then into the Redshift material. So you can see it's it's not really doing much at all, which is fine. We don't want it to do a whole lot. So if I turn it up, you get these kind of ripples in it. We're, we're going to leave it about, I don't know, to... It's really more noticeable probably on like a rounded cube. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so you can... Yeah, that's fine. It's just adding a little bit of variation when the light's going to hit it so it's not perfectly smooth across it. Okay, we're going to say that. But there's one thing that's really, really, really key to this because this model didn't have beveled edges and the geometry is crazy on it to the point where I couldn't just like loop select it and bevel the edge if I tried to bevel a group of it it just broke so I had really sharp edges so basically my edges looked exactly like this so this is what it looked like and this just doesn't look natural nothing is like perfectly like that on a car even the Batmobile so we've got this very straight edges and what we can do rather than change the geometry because that wasn't really an option is Redshift has this amazing amazing feature called round corners boom and then we're gonna go we're gonna try to blend this so it's two things two things to blend we're gonna give the bump blend because the round corners, if you notice, it's purple, same as the bump map. So they kind of color these things in the way that kind of relates them to each other. It's a utility. It's going to be purple. Texture, things, ramps, noises, curvature, things like that. 
and there materials red right so the, you can kind of see how they correlate with each other so this bump map I'm gonna plug in here this is gonna be my base input so it's like a, a Photoshop layer it's the first layer at the top round corners I'm gonna change this well, well I'll show you what it does we're gonna plug this straight in to see what it does okay so we're gonna just ignore this and we're just gonna plug this straight into the bump map and if you look here what it just beveled those corners so let's turn that down a little because it's a little too high boom so now you just have this little highlight okay just want to give the illusion that you're adding a tiny bit of geometry to a, and a bevel to it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this we're gonna take this round corners sometimes it's hard to grab these little things take these and go to bump input zero and layer zero and we're gonna grab this we're gonna plug it in to the overall bump input and you can tell nothing has changed because we're not mixing it at all but we're gonna start mixing this in there and it can mix in pretty high oh there we go so now we still have a little bit of offset from this bump map but we also still have this highlight from the round corners so we're getting a little bit of both by blending them together with this and we can cut this back and that'll kind of split the difference between the two but I'm gonna turn it up just a bit let's say point point nine two yeah I like that now that looks pretty good but it still looks a little off so actually what I did with this is I added another material that I already created so we're gonna do that again and I'm gonna show you how to create that material so what we're gonna do is we're going to go over here we're gonna go blend and we're gonna do a material blender this time and we're gonna plug this come here this little guy in here plug this guy come on up there and so I need to bring in what I call my shiny material so come down here create redshift material car paint let's open that up let's open up our little window edit to shader graph okay well that's not gonna work so we're gonna take that and we're gonna turn that to red and then I think what I did was I added a bump input just because there's a place in the car where I knew I wanted to put this material but not the matte black so I also created a oh, look, bump input so it's a little the car material is a little different it's got different things they're in different places but bump goes into bump what I did with this was another round corners just because it was the same kind of issue where it had really sharp edges and I wanted to smooth those out but I couldn't add geometry so I'm gonna fake it with this which is freaking amazing come on there you go texture input round corners do like 0.2 and uh, we did like 0.1 last time let's do that okay so now we've got this and we're gonna call let's see that the name we're gonna call this shiny too because I already have a shiny okay so let's go back to our matte black 2 and then we're gonna grab this shiny 2 and bring it up here and that's gonna create this reference so now we can just plug that into here into layer 1 and then we just blend that lightly together let's keep it at black let me open this window real quick so what we're going to do with this is we're going to start mixing this shine in. So this is almost like opacity with it. So if I turn it all the way up, hey, it's all shine, which is no good. It's not what we want. We want it sort of just barely. I wish it was a live feedback, but it's not really this. So there we go. So now with this sort of let's go a little a little darker basically what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of this car paint 
kind of look to it as if it was a painted car at one point and then you put this matte paint over top of it. Take that off, default back to the regular look. There it is. You add this back into it just barely. There you go. And so you can just see this little reflection just a little bit in there, but it still looks matte. All right, it might be a little too shiny still. We might want it to be even more subtler. Nathan, you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just affect the reflectivity? Uh, maybe that might work, but this really doesn't take any for any extra effort or anything. So I like this. It kind of lets me control it a little bit more. And so there's something about the car paints reflectivity that I like more than just messing with this. So let's just see the difference here. Okay that and then check this point three five oops see it kind of changes it all the way around let's put this back up to five point five but let's go into a coating let's see if we can do it with coating maybe that's what I want let's put a coat on it okay that's too much let's see if I put a light coat on it Okay, so yeah, you can either mix a shiny texture in with it, or you could add a coat to it. Um, that looks pretty, pretty much the same. That's good. Very, very, very light coat to it. Uh, but I'm actually just gonna keep keep my layer here, and I'm gonna take the coating off. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that was very similar. It's a little more faded in and mixed in this way, so maybe you can dial that in there and get that in there without having to make another material. But um, yeah, so mixing these two materials together has created this matte black, and that is what we put on the body. So to do that, we got our model here, we've got our selection tags. This came with the model. So we've got all this, and then you can just grab your matte black and boom, throw it on there. Let's see what it looks like real quick. A little progressive render. There you go. So that almost, let's do a render region here. So this, you can hit R and bring this render region up. We're going to actually bucket this bit. We're going to take a close look at it. And so that's almost too, too noisy. Uh, let's go into our matte black. Edit that. Take our noise. And we're actually going to make this a little bit closer. I think I was closer with like 21. And we'll see this change here. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. It's subtle, but it's still there. It's still not just the same shade of black across it. That might still be a little more. This is this is how you make materials. It's just like eh, it's a little bit. Yeah. Okay. That's what I want. That's what I want. So what I like to do is. Because I don't use triplanar. A lot of people use triplanar, but um, I actually am just going to set this to cubic. And that just is going to give me a little control on the scale of the noise. If I thought it was too big or anything, I could adjust it because I'm not sure the UV maps were correct. So I like to do that when I don't know what the UV maps are doing, really. We've got that done. We've got a shiny material we've made, and we've got a matte black material we've made. So one thing you can do that's really cool is once you have a material made, you can then go to create, save material preset, and name it, let's yeah, name it matte black mm, car finish. Okay. 
So now if I go and open up a new scene, let's open up the scene I have made. So I've got this little scene set up with a shader ball that I created, an Effectatron shader ball. So now if I go to here and I go to create, I go load material preset, down to user, materials, matte black car finish. Take that, apply it on there. Redshift render. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, there you go. Got yourself a, a texture shader ball with the texture that you can just plop in there. So now you can just like start building a little library of things that you, if you have something that you use over and over again, or you have something you just really like and you'd like to give away or sell them or something, you can. It's real, real easy to, to save a preset. Okay, I think that's a good stopping point. I think we'll actually go over the glass, the tires, the concrete floor, the lights, and the cool light streak effect in the next tutorial. So be sure to subscribe and, and stay tuned for when that video comes out. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.